Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in tonight. This is Political Forum, a presentation by Can TV Chicago. I'm Steve Nikotopoulos, a staff member here at Can TV, and tonight we are joined by Alderman Nick Spasato. Uh, Alderman Spasato, thank you for being here. Thank you, Steve. Always a pleasure to do the show. Now, uh, tonight for March 20th, we're going to be covering a lot of issues regarding the 36th Ward and the City of Chicago. Feel free to call in. The number is on the screen below, 312-738-1060. Feel free to call in over the next 25 minutes if you have any questions for us. We're going to be going over a couple different topics for you, so feel free to call in and we'll try to get your questions added in. First thing I want to do is uh, address your new haircut. So what's the story with uh, your brand new haircut here? Well, it's uh, it's two weeks old now. It's uh, it's really not a new haircut. I shaved my he uh, head a couple weeks ago for uh, St. Baldrick's. I know it's gotten to be pretty popular in Chicagoland. And basically, it's just different groups of people getting together to raise money by shaving their heads and donating their money to the group called St. Baldrick's to uh, try to help prevent uh, kids' cancer. And uh, they're a great organization, and Chicago Fire Department has been very active with it for quite a while, and I always shave my head with the fire department. So I did not shave it, though, to one year of my election. Uh, people were a little too... Uh, a little too worried about the way I'd look. Skinny guys with big noses don't look too good with shaved heads. So, <laughs> as you can see, my hair grows pretty fast. So nice. Uh, yeah, for those not familiar, you worked with the fire department for a number of years. Uh, how is the eighteen years? Eighteen years, yeah. right? How has the transition been to uh, your first term here as an alderman in Chicago? Uh, transition's been great. Everybody's been great. We've been working hard. Um, people uh, really appreciate what we're doing. They appreciate our uh, our openness and accessibility in the community. Um, so yeah, it's been awesome. I mean, we got a, I got a great staff and just everything's going great. It's a, you, you, you know you're doing good when uh, people are coming in and bringing uh, cookies and candy all the time into the office. So yeah, um, so we have a lot of goodies in our office. As I was telling you earlier, we, we always have goodies in there, so. Yep, so yeah, for, for some candy, just head over to the 36 Stop Ward office. Stop in the office, office and uh, <laughs> we'll help you with whatever you need and uh, have a Tootsie Roll or some M&Ms when you're there, so. Now it's a perfect time to go ahead and transition over to your details here. So the office is at uh, 6934 West Versi, and um, of course, uh, people can go to your website, which is uh, aldermanspasado.com, and uh, send you a, a quick email if they have any questions at info at aldermanspasado.com. Brand new, brand new, or newly updated website, I might add, too. So we uh, just redid our website, and uh, a little easier to use, and a little better looking uh, for the people, so. Great. Do you have a newsletter that people can sign up for through the website? Or well, do we really to... don't have a newsletter, but if you join up on our list, you get our email, email e-blast, and that you know that's kind of like a newsletter. We yeah. let you know what's going on in the community. Uh, we, you know, we were doing them a little too often. We felt maybe so now we try to get it down to once a week, unless something really important comes up. There was a, a girl missing uh, recently in the community. We did e-blast for that, but for the most part, now we try we try to do them Thursday or Fridays, and basically they're just what's going on with the community, uh, community events. Uh, try to put a plug in for events, and um, you know it's, it's working real well. If we get leads for jobs through the city, uh, we put that on there. So just important things for people to know in the community. That's great. That's great. Now um, let me talk a little bit about some of the things that you've been talking about in the news lately. Um, now um, this actually ties into your haircut a little bit. You're a member of the newly formed Progressive Caucus. Do you want to talk a little bit about? what the purpose of that caucus is and what your goals are. Sure. I mean, I don't know if I'd say it's newly formed. It's It's been there since I've been in, but it's just kind of been, you know, we put together some bylaws and, and what we stand for. And, um, you know, we, we asked some people that were kind of loosely with the caucus if they want to be officially with it. And, you know, we ended up with nine people and, and we're open br bringing more people in. We, we have our sights on a, a few of our colleagues we'd love to see uh, join. And, um, you know, we're just moving forward and, you know, I think everybody knows what we're about. We're about, you know, um, you know I know it's called the Progressive Caucus, but uh, I, I, I joke or uh, debate with my colleagues sometimes. I think we should be called the Independent Caucus. But, um, you know, we're about, uh, you know, standing up for people, stand up for what we think is right, uh, moving things forward. I mean, that's what a progressive does, moves issues forward. So mm -hmm. um, a lot of the issues really don't pertain to myself or my community, really, like, um, health clinic closings or school closings, but I still like to uh, try to be a champion for people that are less fortunate. That's great. And we'll, we'll get into those topics a little bit during the show. We're going to go to our first call here. Hello, caller. What's your question for our show? Hi. Thank you for taking my question. Actually, you kind of answered it because I was going to ask you about the school closings, and I was curious if anywhere in your ward 
But you just said that none of them are on your ward. Is that correct? My my ward is the the opposite problem. We're uh, we're overcrowded. Uh, one of my schools is over two hundred percent at capacity. A, a couple more, one hundred and fifty. Uh, another uh, school is about one hundred twenty five. I think I really only have one school that's just right about even. So my schools are all overcrowded. Mm -hmm. So we have we have an opposite issue, especially at the northwest side of the, of the ward. But like you were saying, with um, trying to support other people's causes, you were just down in Springfield yesterday for this cause. Can you talk a little bit about what you guys went down there for? Sure. We, we went down there. There, there was a, a bill, Senate Bill 1571, I believe, uh, kind of putting a moratorium on school closings. Um, and that's about, you know, getting some more information, figuring this stuff out a little bit better, uh, a little more communications. Um, you know, one side says one thing, the other side says the other thing. but you know, we don't know much about it, meaning the aldermen, and we were somewhat surprised at the at the hearing when CPS was there, and all of a sudden they come up with a with a binder, of, you know, with the information about school closings, and and we never received any of this information. So, you know, we want to know what's going on. Our our main concern is uh, the kids, of course, is everybody, and and I truly believe that's CPS's concerns, but um, you know, different communities, especially on the south and west sides. If kids are going into schools in different communities, I believe that could be problems. They're crossing, uh, you know, main streets, uh, several of them. It could be very dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know. If a kid's got to go a mile and a half or two miles to school, which is a possibility, that, that just can't be good. So. Well, I even heard that there were some buses that might not be able to cross certain roadways. There's some, literally some things that make it so some kids can't go from one school to another. So there's a lot of things that are still kind of up in the air with the school closings. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I haven't heard that any busing was going to be involved in the school closing. I would mm -hmm. certainly think it would have to, but I haven't heard. I haven't, I haven't seen the CPS's plan, so mm -hmm. I know they had a big binder, and um, we're hoping to get our hands on that real soon to figure out what the plan is. And also, uh, just on my way here, I, I got you know three texts that uh, CPS is going to be announcing uh, the first 50 schools are closing tomorrow, or I don't know if the number is going to be just 50, but I don't know where everybody came up with this number at, but uh, 50 seems to be the number that uh, people were letting me know about that tomorrow we're going to be hearing of 50 schools that are going to be closed. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to the next call here. Hello, caller. What's your question? Hello, I have a question for the alderman. I'd like to know what projects does he have going on in his ward, and also I'd like to know um, what's his input and uh, jails um, at 26 in California with the overcrowding population. Thank you. Uh, as far as any big projects going on in the ward, there's really nothing going on that's really big. Um, our biggest project was we had a new school about a year ago. Uh, but it's just it's just a good solid community that just you know takes care of itself. Everybody looks out after, after each other. Mm. Um, you know, takes care of their property. There's really not many problems. It's the safest community in the city. Uh, no murders in almost two and a half years now. Um, it's very little crime, uh, and and the crime we have is uh, there's crime and and and, it, and it's disturbing. But it's mostly you know home break-ins, cars, or uh, garage burglaries. Uh, as far as Cook County Jail, all I know is probably what you know, that it's way overcrowded and it's a big concern right now. They're almost up to uh, 10,000 uh, that I hear. Was that a tenth or was it 1,000? I'm losing track of my numbers. I think maybe, uh, but I know they're real close to. They're uh, very close. They're right, yeah, very close, and, they're, and it's a big concern because summertime they always have more people, and right now they have March to be right at their capacity. That's a serious problem. Well, yeah, I heard that they were talking about maybe turning a room for two, uh, two incarcerated people into a room for three, trying to fit everybody in with mm -hmm. the overcounting problem. So yeah, they're right there with it. So. Yeah, that, that that doesn't sound good to me. So no, we have another caller coming in. Hello, caller. What's your question? Yes, good evening. I have a question concerning a ward remapping. Uh, when does it uh, take effect? Because I want to know right now who is representing me. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's an excellent question. So uh, a big uh, question. Th this has been, a, this has been a, a big argument out there. My opinion and the opinion of Corporation Council is uh, I was elected for a four-year term, and the, about the new boundaries going into effect of May of 2015, Myself and my office, we are servicing everybody, uh, unlike my colleagues who are people, if, according to the new boundaries, depending on who you talk to, what the boundaries are, are servicing um, only the, the new boundaries, are not servicing the people that elected them. So I feel a lot of my colleagues feel that the, the people that 
uh, aren't in their ward anymore. They're of no use to them anymore because they can't vote for them, so they're not going to service them. But we're not doing that. We're servicing everybody. So right now, I had the second biggest change in the city. Um, Bob Fioretti lost 100%. I lost about 80%, and I already had the fifth biggest ward. So our office has been pretty overwhelmed with uh, my colleagues directing their pe the people that call them for stuff to come to us. So now it depends on who you talk to. If you, if you talk to the clerk's office to get a boundary, they give you one They give you one word you're in. You talk to the Board of Elections, it's another boundary. Uh, different departments are, most, most of the, mostly all the departments are going by uh, the elected boundary. So uh, some of the uh, committee chairs are just not recognizing the elected, um, elected officials anymore to represent that. And, uh, you know, six of us put a letter out there, or five of us, I'm sorry, and, you know, we're kind of, we're trying to, you know, get this figured out, get a meeting with the mayor and get a meeting with Corporation Council to clarify all of this. So it's, it's very confusing and depends on who you talk, they're going to get a different answer. But I believe whoever you elected is your alderman for four years till May of 2015. So, yeah, just to go into this a little bit more, you're saying that 80% of the people, and this is this is the, the, the ward map that you were elected with, 80% of these people are, are probably a little confused about who they're supposed to be talking to right now. Go on, and, and it's just that my ward, it's all over the place, but I mean, the, the, the most drastic change was a uh, second ward and a 36th ward. Mm -hmm. So we, I was the fifth most populated ward in the city as it was. So now basically I have a whole new ward. So I'm, I'm servicing the ward that I had, plus all the new people that we have. So, so you're doing And some time. things are really, well, it's, it is. It truly is double time. Our office has been overwhelmed. We've been super busy, but it's very confusing for the people. So if they go to, you know, an alderman's office and they say, you know, we're not your alderman anymore, go see Alderman Spasado, and they're very confused when they come to us. But, you know, we still service them. It's a little disappointing to see uh, that some of my colleagues would turn people away on some really simple things. But um, we're not turning anybody away, whether they're old or no. Well, I hope the, the mayor gives you a meeting soon so that can, that can get I hope I hope so. It's been almost five months. I've been trying to get a meeting since November. And that was the first talk of the new boundaries going into effect. So originally they said it was for election purposes only in November. And now after the election, they're like, well, these are the new boundaries. So they said November. Then they said January. Now a bunch of the committee chairs put letters out saying they're not recognizing the, the elected aldermen anymore. They're going by the new boundaries. So that's just not right. Um, you know, legally, legally it's wrong. Corporation Council said you're 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 to serve a four-year term. So, so this is this is probably not over yet. It's not over yet. I can guarantee you that. Okay. All right. Let's go to another caller here. Let's uh, share the conversation. Hello, caller. What's your question? Hi, Alderman. Um, you said that there's no murders in your ward. There's um, no school closing seems like a good place to live. Can you tell me what are those boundaries of your ward again? And sure. is there any affordable housing in your ward? Uh, there's no real affordable housing over there, but the boundaries are basically North Avenue to Irving to Harlem slash uh, Cumberland. Um, Cumberland is First Avenue to roughly Narragansett. So. Okay. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, there they so are. So Irving is still a boundary Irving. Irving's up here. the top, pretty much furthest north. With uh, no, North Avenue is the furthest south. And then if you look to the west there, you can the see north. there's Harlem. But then it, it goes down Belmont there to Cumberland, and then pretty much Narragansett with a little bump out to Austin over there. But yeah, it's a great safe community. It's very diversified. Um, about one third Hispanic, about twenty percent African American, and then pretty much the rest white. With probably maybe like five percent. Uh, kind of immigrant type Polish people there, but everybody gets along, everybody takes care of themselves, and there's never, when there's ever issues in the ward, it's it's, it's never like a black on white issue or, or a Latino on white. It's just, um, you know, it, it, it's just it's just a great ward. Just everybody gets along, looks out for each other. Great, great, great to hear it. Uh, we have another call from the community. Hello, caller, what's your question? Hi, I know that since the city's facing so many uh, budget challenges, they're looking at closing um, police, Departments, but I, I know that you have background as a firefighter, and, and I heard somewhere that a lot of fire departments are making more medical calls these days than fire calls, and that I was just kind of wondering why there isn't any cutbacks on the fire department side. And there is. You're wondering why there, there isn't, or if there's going to be? Yeah, why, why, why that's falling on, on the schools and on the police department and not on the fire department at all? Uh, I, you'd have to ask the mayor about that. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it's this you. you the fire department's a little different. You need you need five five mans to operate a truck or an engine, as you say. So, uh, it's you know you, you want to keep the houses open. You don't want to close any houses because nobody wants to see a firehouse closed in their community because then it would be that much longer for a response. 
Um, and, you know, our, our calls are up. They're not fire calls aren't up, but certainly medical calls are up. And we do a lot of um, what you call EMS runs, which is emergency medical situations. And, you know, we send guys out. You have trained EMTs on there or paramedics to, uh, you know, to help the people out for whatever their, for their need may be. Great. Thank you. Uh, now, talking a little bit about city council, I wanted to get your opinion on the um, the uh, Chicago Magazine article that came out on the Yes Ben. Did you uh, have a chance to read it? Do you have any thoughts I on it? I certainly did. Uh, they singled me out as... Um, uh, one of five uh, aldermen that uh, were not considered yes men. Um, basically, I don't remember the exact numbers, but uh, the article stated that 50% uh, of the no votes were from the five people uh, uh, mentioned in the article. Uh, I, I believe it was like 120 no votes so far in the past two years in the city council, and 60 of the no votes were from uh, Alderman Fioretti, uh, Alderman Hairston, Alderman Wagsback, uh, Alderman Arena, and myself. So. So it's 120 no votes out of like 2,000 Yeah, I forgot votes. what the exact amount was, maybe 1,200 or something. Okay. So 100, okay. 120 no votes so far. And um, I don't know, I, the article was, uh, I don't think it was any knock towards us. I think it was more of a knock towards the people that are uh, 21 people that were voted yes for, on everything. Um, I've had good friends. I've had family members of, and many a disagreements with them. Um, it's just hard to me to believe that, on, you know, all of those times somebody could agree with everything that's said. So, now, what do you think the main issue going forward with too many people who just vote yes with everything is? Do you think that there needs to be more debate or more discussion? Like, what kind of a disservice do you feel like not having more no votes might cause Chicago to have? Well, I mean, I don't know if you need to have no votes. I mean, I think you need to have reasons. I, I feel all my no votes were legitimate reasons. Uh, I'm not voting no just to vote no. Uh, I felt I've, I've had some good reasons. There was one issue there I voted no on that didn't affect my ward much, but it, I, I just, uh, that was the billboard, the electronic billboards. I just w wasn't that crazy about them. I, I just didn't think it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. I, I know we're trying to raise money. I, I certainly wouldn't want to be in a community that that billboard would be by my house. Yesterday we were driving back from Springfield and we were joking. It was actually... Um, I believe uh, four to five of us were against the billboards, and we were just looking at the littered highway, and it just looked terrible. It looked <laughs> terrible. So I'd hate okay. to wreck our uh, our skylines with you know electronic billboards, and just it just didn't look good. I, I just don't think it's the right thing to do. I think a lot of uh, I think a lot of people in Chicago feel the same way. So yeah. Um, let me remind everybody, we have about eight minutes left in the show. So if you want to call in with any questions, the number's on the screen: three one two. 738-1060. This is a live interview show with Alderman Nick Spasato, who took the time to come in here to Can TV tonight. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about, um, now I know that menu funds, every year, you know, each, each ward gets a certain amount of money to basically fix the infrastructure and whatnot. Have you already put some thought into what is going to be uh, focused on in the 36 ward. Yes, we've already we've been uh, targeting. Uh, it's mainly streets. The streets are in such bad shape. It's I mean, uh, you know, people want new sidewalks, new lights, new curbs. It's just you'd, you'd love to do it for them, but it, the streets are a priority for me. I just been my my two years. I've focused, you know, probably 95 percent of my money on on uh, on streets. It roughly cost you fifty thousand dollars to to repave a street. Um, you know, it's just. That's that's just my priority streets. So yeah, um, it's just it's just a tough thing. The, the infrastructure, the, the streets that are in in you know in in this town are just beat up. And with our weather, they just you know it's just it, that's my number one priority is, is streets. So it's hard it's hard to put uh, two hundred thousand dollars to get two blocks of lights when I could get four or five streets done possibly uh, with that. So and everybody wants their street done. I mean, mm -hmm. somebody has one little crack or a little pothole and they want a new street. So and whenever I do a street. <laughs> The streets right by them. The people are coming in the office, and they want to know why we didn't do their streets too. Um, for example, in my ward last year, I had a, a big stretch of uh, a particular street, Wellington, that I repaved it for about four blocks. And the people on the, the west end of that, and the people on the east end, want to know why I didn't go another block, you know, each way or two blocks. It's just, you know, it's just you have to draw the line somewhere and try to peck away at everything. So. So uh, now, how how does an alderman's office work? Do you have a lot of uh, different people that'll handle different types of topics with people walking in the door and asking for help with one thing or another? Pretty much, our most of the people in our office multitask. 
Uh, we do have uh, my office manager is an expert on certain thing uh, and another fella. So um, for the most part, if somebody comes in for basic stuff, anybody could help them or handle, handle it for them. With the exception of myself, I, uh, I know the least of us. Uh, uh, services to help people in, in the ward over there when it comes to like black parties or truck permits or uh, in, putting in uh, a tree trimming or something like that but uh, yeah pretty much anybody could do anything for you if it's some more little more technical stuff well we have our, our office manager is a real expert when it comes to uh you know taxes and everything so no that's great that's great so um generally uh, you say that you know the, the crime is mostly under control you know there's obviously some burglary and, and whatnot do you involve yourself with uh, some of the district commanders? Or I have the a Caps very, office? very close relationship with both of my commanders. I have two excellent commanders, and two great, um, two great districts of police officers. Uh, I have many, many of the. Uh, of course, I have my commander's phone number, but I, many of the police officers share their numbers with me. If I need anything, they take care of it. I mean, I can't say enough about uh, the CPD and the 36th Ward and the jobs my two commanders do, and I'm just, just a pleasure to work for these guys, and they just do a great job with the limited resources they have. Um, I'm just so proud of them and just so thankful for everything they do for our community. So That's great. That's great. So uh, now with the um, the next season about to come, where it's supposed to be spring right now, but it feels, it feels pretty much like winter right 50 now. 50 degrees right? colder than last year at this day. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so it feels like it. Um, what do you have coming up in the ward? Do you have any any events for springtime or any kind of uh, holiday events that you're trying to uh, to help promote? Yeah, we're, we're having uh, the, the, the citywide uh, spring cleanup. Um, you know, but like I say, our community pretty much you know takes care of itself. People maintain their properties. We have very few issues. Uh, sometimes some of the foreclosures are big issues. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a few of those that are real problems. Sometimes they don't cut their grass. You know, some we get out there cut it. Um, get the city out sometimes or mostly the neighbors at least maintain the front and there's an issue with trespassing going in there because somebody does own it whether it's usually the bank uh, some of the banks are pretty good but some of these uh, mortgage holders are just terrible so but for the most part they they keep them pretty well uh, locked up a lot of times it's issue with um, if people live there and they're gone and it's kind of being foreclosed but it's not officially foreclosed, but maybe they have a, a, an older kid and they go in there with their friends and, you know, and the neighbors complain, but you know, police can't really kick them out because you know, it says that you know, he lives there still. So. Right, right. Uh, yeah, real quick, let me ask, do you want people calling 311 or do you want people calling your ward office? when they're asking for, for stuff to be done. Do you like to track that yourself, or do you like... Uh, we, we like when they call the office. We like to help them and, and uh, make sure they're on my, our email list because that's the way we could communicate with them what's going on in the community. Okay. But whatever's easier for them, I, I think it's much easier to call our office. It's, you know, 311 sometimes takes quite a while. Mm -hmm. uh, you call our office, you know, for little simple things, uh, tree trimming or potholes, um, you know, garbage pickup. I mean, that I, I would go I would go right to us. Uh if they don't want to deal with us for whatever reason and they'd rather go to 311 and you know wait on the phone that's fine but yeah we're we help everybody so okay and i think we have time for one last phone call hello caller what's your question yes i have another question for the alderman okay, okay. i live in logan square um ward the third year ward the crime's not um so bad um, over here but my question is i'd like to know do you go um with your follow um you know um alderman um outside of your ward to go to like the Englewood neighborhood because those are really crime-ridden um, neighborhoods that really need attention for the city. Okay. Do you do you at all go to other neighborhoods to help other aldermen out? Uh, not usually. Everybody pretty much is responsible for their own community. Um, one thing we uh, didn't mention that when there was the uh, the budget came up, we held the uh, uh, the Progressive Caucus held uh, community hearings. Um, uh, and and brought people in and one of our uh, community hearings was uh, was on the south side I don't remember if it was Inglewood or not but it was pretty far south um, but yeah we you know we you know we work together but basically an alderman from Englewood is not going to consult me on something that needs to be done in his ward and I'm certainly not going to consult him or her on uh, what needs to be done in my ward. Okay, great. Well, we're running out of show time here, so I just wanted to make an official thank you for coming in tonight. Uh, we know that you've had a busy a busy day, so we really appreciate you making the time. And, um, you know, you're, you're one of my favorite aldermen to talk to, so thanks for sitting down with me. Thank you very much. Look forward to being back again soon. So. And um, any last thoughts before we go off the air? Any last things that you want to leave with the, uh, the viewing audience? 
I just I appreciate all the people having the faith in me, and I just keep, uh, you know, trying to do what I think is right for the city and my community. And um, 36 Ward, awesome place to live. So if you guys are looking for a place to live, think about the 36 Ward. So sounds good. All right, and thank you to Sylvia for covering phones tonight. This has been Political Forum for March 20th. Uh, it's a presentation of CAN TV. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back next Wednesday night at 7 p.m.